YouTube, what's good? Metro here. Hey man, we're just gonna continue this. I'm bad for now, I'm uploading in a little bit. Gotta get back to it. Ain't gonna get fancy tonight, we're just gonna jump right in and talk about this document. We're going to official link right here. So, hopefully this is not repetitive. Call of Duty Modern Warfare has been available for less than three weeks, but it already is making waves. Breaking records within 10 days, the first person military shooter video game earned more than 1 billion in revenue, yet it has also been shrouded in controversy. Not least because missions include assassinating an Iranian general clearly based on Qasem Soleimani, a statesman and military leader slain by Trump administration in 2020, and a level where players must shoot drug traffickers attempting to cross the U.S. slash Mexico border. The Call of Duty franchise is an entertainment juggernaut, having cold sold close to half billion games since it launched in 2003. Its publisher, Activision Blizzard, is giant in the industry behind titles, games, and Guitar Hero, Witchcraft, Starcraft, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Crash Bandicoot, and Candy Crush Saga series. Yet a closer inspection of Blizzard Activision's key staff and their connections to state power, as well as details gleaned from documents obtained under the Freedom Information Act, reveal that Call of Duty is not a neutral first-person shooter, but a carefully constructed piece of military propaganda designed to advance the interests of the U.S. national security state. Interesting. Preacher doing a eulogy with one airpod in. In the first five minutes of the new Call of Duty has you, yep, pilot the missile that kills Soleimani. Next segment, military entertainment complex. It has long been a matter of public record that American spies have targeted and penetrated Activision Blizzard games. Documents released by Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA, CIA, FBI, and Department of Defense infiltrated the vast online realms such as World of Warcraft, creating make-believe characters to monitor potential illegal activity and recruit informers. Indeed, at one point, there were so many U.S. spies in one video game that they had to create a deconfliction group as they were wasting time unwittingly surveillancing each other. Virtual games, the NSA wrote, were an opportunity and a target-rich communication network. Yo. However, documents obtained legally under the Freedom of Information Act by journalist and researcher Tom Secker shared with a Mint Press News show that the connections between the national security state and the video game industry go far beyond this and into active collaboration. In September 2018, for example, the United States Air Force flew a group of entertainment executives, including Call of Duty slash Activision Blizzard producer Coco Francini, <laughs> who the f okay, to their headquarters at Humbertfield, Florida. Ah, oh, that's what that document was. I I never heard of Coco Francini or whatever, but okay. The explicit reason for doing so, they wrote was to showcase their hardware and to make the entertainment industry more credible advocates for the U.S. war machine. We've got a bunch of people working on future blockbusters. Think Marvel, Call of Duty, etc. Stoked about this trip, wrote one Air Force officer. Another email notes that one point visit was to provide heavy hitter producers with AFSOC Air Force Special Operations Command Immersion focused on tactical airmen and air to ground capabilities. The great opportunity to educate this community and make them more credible advocates for the for us in the production of any future movies slash television productions on the Air Force and our special tactics community, wrote the AFSOC Community Relations Chief. Francini and others were shown CV-22 helicopters and AC-130 planes in action both which feature heavily in Call of Duty games. Yet, Call of Duty collaboration with the military goes back much further. The documents show that the United States Marine Corps, USMC, was involved in the production of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Call of Duty 5. The game's producers approached the USMC at the 2010 E3 Entertainment Convention in Los Angeles, requesting access to hovercraft. <laughs> hovercraft. <laughs> what? <laughs> Vehicles which later appeared in the game. Call of Duty 5 executives also asked for the use of a hovercraft, a tank, and a C-130 aircraft. This collaboration continued in 2012 with the release of Modern Warfare 4. 
where producers requested access to all manner of air and ground vehicles. Man. Secker told Mint Press that by collaborating with gaming industry, the military ensures a positive portrayal that can help it reach recruitment targets, stating that for certain demographics of gamers, it's recruitment portal. Some first-person shooters have embedded efforts within the games themselves. Even without this sort of explicit recruitment effort, games like Call of Duty make warfare seem fun, exciting, and an escape from the drudgery of their normal lives. Let's not forget, like, if you're trying to recruit them, war, that, uh, war is not fun. I mean, yeah, you can find it's fun in some moments, but at the time of action, I ain't gonna say that's fun. The military clearly held a considerable influence over the direction of Call of Duty games. In 2010, its producers approached the Department of Defense for help on a game set in 2075. However, the DoD liaison expressed that concern that the scenario being considered involves future war with China. As a result, Activision Blizzard began looking at other possible conflicts to design the game around. In the end, Due to part two military objections, the game was permanently abandoned. Oh shit! So, say you're a producer and you want to make a war film. You would walk into the entertainment liaison office in downtown Los Angeles. You say, I want to film at an Air Force base, or I want an aircraft carrier, or I want some Black Hawk helicopters, or whatever it is. And they would tell you straight away, give us your entire script. And we've worked with Mr. Bay here since Armageddon, if I'm not mistaken, and, uh, and hope to do more of the same. I've got a direct line to the Pentagon. <laughs> Some people probably would say, well, yeah, I've heard of this, like, you know, Top Gun, maybe Black Hawk Down, maybe some of the Marvel series. But what they don't know is how systematic this has been and how huge this operation has been. You can call it censorship, you can call it propaganda. It's, it's all of these things. Now these freedom of information requests that have been successful allow us to actually look at that list and it's stunning. What we've found is that thousands upon thousands upon thousands of products have been affected and are often rewritten at script level by the national security state in the United States. Do normal people know about that? No, of course they don't. first-person shooters we'll cover that next bro I'll, like i said i'll break these into segments uh yeah stay tuned we'll just keep going through these documents man i mean this is interesting stuff let me know what you guys think down below i'll catch you on the next one peace